Hello and welcome to yet another Android tablet installation for a car. Just thought I'd share my experiences as I'm doing my own installation and um, I'll be doing this into a Subaru Liberty 2008 Generation 4 model to the rest of the world that's a Subaru Legacy and uh, hopefully this video will provide some inspiration or some guidance for people who are going to be doing something similar. The tablet I'll be using is a Nexus 7 2013 second generation model. Um, found this nice and cheap off eBay. Um, had a cracked screen, so I bought a cheap uh, replacement screen, fixed it up, and it's working great, as you can see. The frame itself is uh, a genuine part from um, japanparts.com. I'll put a link in the description below. And uh, the tablet just happens to fit absolutely perfectly um, into this frame. Um, those observant among you might notice that the vents are actually slightly narrower than that of the standard um, frame where you have a cubby in the middle or the sat nav in the middle, um, but that's okay. Uh, the charge connector on the Nexus 7 tablet unfortunately is uh, surface mounted inside the tablet on the motherboard. So you will have to drill a small hole into the side of the vent on this side in order to be able to connect the power cable. The power cable, of course, you can take any USB micro uh, USB power connector. You will have to cut the sheathing open so you can expose all the wires and then effectively just fold it over and then maybe put some heat shrink on top to keep it all tidy. Once you've done that, you can then sort of hook it in and have it this way. That'll hook around like that and it will take up a minimum amount of space in there, which means it should not obstruct the vent too much. Now, in my case, my heat shrink is not actually applied properly. I've got to redo it. Uh, it's actually obstructing left and right movement, but up and down is working just fine. Uh, in my case, it's actually not going to be such a bad deal because I sit on this side, obviously, driving an Australian domestic right-hand drive car. So uh, the vents is actually pointing in that direction already. On the back, you can see here I've got my small hole drilled into the side where the power cable comes out. This is a standard USB Y cable. Um, that is then connected to my power supply and the Y cable connects to my other USB devices. Uh, the power supply is a cheap Chinese USB power supply. Um, you have to be careful with these. Some of them are dodgy um, and some of them don't um, down, step down a wide range of voltage. These particular ones can step down anywhere between 9 volts and 40 volts, which means it'll suit cars and trucks. Um, it won't survive um, the cranking of the car in terms of maintaining power, but it will survive the wild range of voltage that usually occurs when cranking the car. So, for example, a car could crank anywhere between, say, 9 volts and 15 volts um, while it's starting up and then settles back down to 12 volts. And this will still happily step down to 5 volts. Now, uh, the dodgy ones, you'll find uh, some don't have the voltage regulator on the side. And uh, in this particular case, this one does have it, but it's broken. It doesn't work. So these uh, USB ports in this particular instance are actually outputting 7.5 volts, which is no good. Um, it has to be 5 volts. The power supply is capable of providing up to 5 amps, um, as long as the incoming supply can supply that as well. And you'll find most cars uh, can um, supply generally about 10 amps on each fuse. Now, um, on the side here we have the power inputs. Uh, so, uh, left one here is the input, middle one is the ground, and the right is the output. So you can actually hook up something else if you want, but whatever is on this output is also supplied to these USB ports. And we can test that by getting Mr. Multimeter. If you haven't got one of these, I highly recommend investing in one. So what we'll do is I'll measure the input. So pin on the middle, on the left, and you can see my input voltage from my AC um, DC converter is currently nearly 13 volts. If I connect to the output, you can see that the output is just over 5 volts. And if I use the screw on the voltage regulator, I can adjust that up or down accordingly. So the idea with it is that uh, the four ports, I'll have um, one port obviously running the tablet, one port will also connect to my mobile phone. The tablet can pull down around about 1.8 amps, uh, the phone will pull down about one amp um, at uh, fast charging mode, and I'll have two ports free that where I could probably connect a port in the back of the car and one in the front of the car, so at least my passengers can also charge their devices while they're in the car with me. The back of the tablet, the tablet is connected to or snapped into just a standard eBay uh, hard plastic cover. That hard plastic cover, it's got a nice smooth finish, so it's easier to, to attach things to it. Uh, I'm using uh, some right angle hooks available from a hardware store to actually connect it to the side. The adhesive I'm using is actually 3M hook tape, not Velcro. Velcro is uh, trademarked by another company. But basically it's a plastic version, a hard plastic version of Velcro. So it snaps together, 
it's quite rigid, it's quite strong, um, and when you use it in small blocks like I've done here, I've just done several strips, it um, actually holds everything in place very, very well. Uh, it's very solid, has a bit of flexibility, so it'll at least absorb some vibration, and at least I can actually pull it apart if I need to get access to the tablet for whatever reason. If you have a look on the front, I can give it a good whack on the front, and you can see that it's not actually physically moving, it's all solid, um, and it still looks nice and flush. It's all uh, perfectly lined up everywhere, and it is great stuff. All right, so the Y cable, uh, here I've got connected just a mouse for the purposes of testing OTG and proving that it works. As you can see, I can see a mouse pointer moving there, and I can grab the screen, move it left and right, and uh, click on things and so forth without a problem. Um, what I will have there in the car, of course, is a USB hub, and that hub will then connect to other devices, such as my, uh, well, I'm going to get a Joy-Con to run the steering wheel controls for volume and uh, music um, uh, track skipping and so forth. I'm going to have a reverse camera, which will be just a standard UVC device like that, com connecting a composite video camera for reverse camera. And um, probably other things as well, I probably have a Bluetooth game controller for games and um, maybe some other devices as well, such as a USB camera to do track recording, things like that. Uh, connecting to the car itself, we'll be facilitated just through another cable here. So um, this cable will connect to the power supply and the other end has a ground, the other end? ground loop that will connect to somewhere on the metal chassis in the driver's area, plenty of place to screw it on. And this here will connect to the cigarette uh, fuse. I'm going to remove the cigarette fuse, connect into here instead. That will then go into the car. So the cigarette lighter uh, will still be supplied power. And this second fuse here, which is a 5 amp power, uh, fuse, will supply the, the DC power supply for the tablet. Should something go wrong with that power supply or something starts sucking down more than 5 amp, this fuse will blow and cut power to the power supply, which in turn will cut power to the tablet. Um, now in terms of power for the tablet, I'm using two mirrors ROM, which allows me to suck down more power than normal. Uh, at the moment it can uh, take down 1.2 amp, it's only sucking down 86 milliamps at the moment because it is fully charged. Two mirrors ROM also allows me to do a um, custom shutdown screen. So at the moment if I disconnect my AC power supply, a little shutdown animation will play there. And that's just taken straight from the Confidence in Motion World uh, Subaru campaign. It will then go into a deep sleep and it can stay that way for several weeks. When I reconnect power, the tablet will simply power up again, come out of sleep, and we'll just go back to where you were before. And there we are there. Not a problem. Um, that's basically it. That's where I am at now. Uh, the audio will be facilitated through a Bluetooth headset. A Bluetooth headset. Bluetooth head unit. I've got a Blue, Sony Bluetooth head unit in the car. Um, it can act as a Bluetooth headset for my phone, uh, but I'll have the Bluetooth audio on it disabled and only have Bluetooth audio from the tablet going to it instead. That means I can play music from the tablet and when a phone call comes in, the music is automatically paused. The control is then to given to the phone. The phone uh, can be used to make the call. All the audio comes through the car's speakers and when the call finishes, the music then resumes. All other audio coming from the tablet, such as navigation, end games and so forth, will all come through um, Bluetooth uh, audio as well. My head unit can handle Bluetooth 3, which is a great standard, um, and I don't feel there's really any need to do uh, USB DACs like uh, some people do in their other installations. Now, some audio purists out there will probably say, heathen, don't do that. Uh, honestly, I can't fault the audio quality. It sounds fantastic, and I don't see any reason um, to do it any other way. It simplifies the installation, means there's less cables and uh, less stuff to install as well. So like I said, that's where I am at the moment. I'll be doing some more videos um, to track how I go. And um, thank you for watching.